Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. All right. Um, I tried to get on a program the other day with End Time Dreams and Visions. Uh, John from Watchmen from that great day was hosting it, and I had the wrong earpiece in. You know what it sounds like when I have the wrong earpiece in. It's all garbled up, and I didn't realize what was going on until it was too late. So there was a point that I was trying to make when I was in there, and um, I think Aaron from God a Minute had heard what I said, but didn't get expounded upon. So I wanted to talk about that today and uh, take you into the timeline and take a look at what we're looking at. For me, the next high watch date is June the 16th, and I'm going to show you why. That is literally two days from now. Um, we just saw a, a recording from 911, a young man, no reason to lie, um, uh, something crashed in his backyard and he saw these beings with glowing eyes and they were eight to 10 feet tall. So the lie is being set up and me personally, and, and I want to say something else. Uh, somebody sent me an email um, asking me to send me something. Um, as you know, I don't accept anything. I never have. Not a penny, not a piece of paper, not a pen, nothing. Um, it's nothing against you. I really appreciate it. Uh, that you offered. I've had many offers um, over the years to send me equipment and so that I can do this better, but I've, I'm have i of the mindset personally. Now, I want to clarify this because uh, somebody made a comment that, that uh, was not cool. There are people who will charge. I'll have a PayPal and more power to them because I have a full-time job and a family and a lot of things that I have to do, so I don't get to invest my full attention to this. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit has led me through this timeline, um, but I don't believe that uh, personally, on a personal level, I should ever accept anything for this work. I believe it comes from, from God. If somebody has a PayPal or a Cash App or whatever, I'm glad that they do because they are research. I don't want to ever make you think that because you donate to something like that, that there, there's something wrong with those people. There's nothing wrong with them. That's okay. They, they devote a lot more time to this research than I do. And my point was that what I'm doing in my videos and why I appreciate every sim single subscriber and pray that there are even more, it's not for me because I don't gain anything from it. It's for the tribulation saints. If there was anything you could do to ensure, here's what's going to happen. So we know there's a rapture. And what does a rapture mean? It means a snatching away out of imminent danger at the very last second. There is also a gathering. This happens in seal six. And I'm going to show that to you. And that's what I was, the point I was trying to make on uh, all these titans that were getting together in this uh, YouTube room to talk about this stuff is that there is a difference, and I'm going to show that to you. That's what I found, and that's why I'm here, to bring that to you. I'm going to go through the timeline like I always do. I have a lot of new subscribers. It might become monotonous for some of you, but some of you uh, might see something, and I get emails. Uh, everybody has my email. They email me stuff all the time, and it's fantastic, and I really appreciate that. So to that person that was trying to send me something, nothing personal, I just will not accept anything. Uh, I, I maintain that. Uh, I have through the Discord. We don't allow uh, any money to exchange hands in Discord. If somebody does it privately, uh, that's fine. I just don't do it. But again, there's nothing wrong with doing it because a lot of these wonderful people devote their entire days, I mean, day after day after day. Not that I don't devote a lot of time, but they simply, like, just they devote so much to it, and, and I'm not saying they should be compensated, but you should give them the opportunity to continue to devote that time so that they can pay their bills. So I'm, I'm happy for them, and I praise them for the work that they've done. So now that I got that cleared up, now that there's no confusion, there will be confusion, but there shouldn't be. It's real simple. Um, if you're buying a jet airliner uh, off the Word of God, you're doing something wrong. Uh, you shouldn't be able to do that. But if you're paying your bills and you're able to bring the, the word of God to the masses, then you're doing something right, and that's that's honorable. Okay, so 
I wanted to, when I was on there, I wanted to point out something that I found that we've all missed. And uh, I think, and I mentioned it, and uh, I think, I don't know if Dr. Barry heard it or if they understood it, but I, I want to talk about that here in this video, and I'll show it to you right now. Okay, let's start off right here. Put my glasses on. All right, now, very unique passage in right here in Genesis 8. There are three dates all packed into 3, 4, and 5 of Genesis 8. Three separate dates. And if you don't use a 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31 day of the month calendar, if you don't use the Enoch timeline, you will not arrive at the cross, and I'm going to show that to you. Oh, what I, I forgot to mention is that why am I personally doing this? I know that God is going to save his elect, his select group of the elect. We're taken out of the elect. There is this group of people, huge group of people. Yeah, I smashed my finger. It was... <laughs> It hurt. I'm going to lose that whole nail. Um, there's this whole group of people. And out of that group of people is a group of people that will be raptured. But there's this massive group of people that will be gathered. They are the sleepy church. They will be gathered at seal six. And I'm going to show that to you. That's what I found. And there is a verse that we go back and forth on so much. And I'm studying this verse and I'm like, there's something here that I'm missing. How do we split the verse up to say, well, first is a rapture, and, and then as soon as the rapture happens, the man of sin is going to be revealed. But that's not exactly what the passage is saying, and, and I'm going to show that to you. So why do I make these videos? I believe that the bride is chosen, and it's done. We were foreknown from the for foundations of the world. These videos, and what I want from you is not to get subscribers, but to subscribe because I want these videos and even and mostly the people that i talk about the, i'm going to show you a group of people that you should subscribe to so that their videos make it through i and i heard dr barry i think it was dr barry or um bob uh say uh, bob from end times dreams and visions say that they and and the wonderful thing that i'm seeing is that things that i'm realizing out of nowhere there are these other watchers that are saying the same thing. They're not watching my video. They have a lot more important things to do than to watch my video. The Holy Spirit is not only revealing these things to me, he's revealing it to them. That's why we seem to be coming upon the same information. It's not because we're copying each other. It's because the Holy Spirit is revealing it to a lot of watchers right now. And that thought is that this... Um, that this rapture is going to occur and then the seals, the six seals are going to be open in quick succession. Remember that our door was open. Remember that Noah went into the ark and he sat at the doorway, just like Lot sat at the, the gateway before uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Noah went and sat at that doorway. All the animals came in. Um, you can read in the book of Jubilees how the animals were actually all babies. And just like the clothes of the Jews that were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, their shoes never wore out, their clothes never became dirty. They didn't have to wash anything ever because their clothes simply never got dirty. I would imagine their bodies never sweat or got dirty or smelled either. Um, God fed them from the manna from heaven. You can only imagine what that does to the human body when you're getting food from heaven you know and that's probably why they uh made it through and the same thing is going to happen in that that door will stay open for seven days i just have this and and that's what's been on my holy spirit and when i heard them say that in that room i was like whoa and i jumped in of course had the wrong earpiece so nobody could hear me but um what I'm hearing is that the six seals are going to open up very quickly, perhaps in six days. 
And so when that ark door, just like in the days of Noah, there's a lot of references just like in the days of Noah. Well, I'm going to show you that all of this ties exactly from Noah to Jesus. It all ties back together. Everything starts with God and ends with God. And so I think that those seals are going to be opened up in very quick succession. So when we have, talk about this group of people and then some of us are raptured, this other group of people is gathered out of, you know, we're raptured out of uh, imminent danger. They're gathered once imminent danger has begun. And I think it's literally six days. So let me go back into the pictures. In this verse, we have three different dates. And again, you must count, use the Enoch count. If you don't, you will not land on the cross. It will not do it. It says, and the waters return from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, now, I'm going to speak to the Jewish timeline. I'm not going to speak to the Gregorian timeline. Even though I have matched it up to our current dates, um, I'm going to speak mostly. We know that the flood, according to the Bible, began on Heshvan 17. I think that's Halloween Day, October the 31st. Um, 150 days later, if you don't use the Enoch count, 150 days later, will not land on Nisan 14. Nisan 14 is the day Jesus died on the cross. He gave up the ghost. Here it says, and the waters return from off the earth continually, continually, and after the end of 150 days, there's that 150, the waters were abated. And then the ark rested in the seventh month and 17th day. Now, this is the Enoch calendar. This is the calendar previous to Exodus 12. The seventh month and 17th day is the first month and 17th day. It backs up exactly 182 days. Everything rewinds 182 days. When God passed the law in Exodus 12, this is now the head of your year. He didn't back it up 180 days. He didn't use a 30-day calendar or 29. He used a 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31. That's the only way this backs up 182 days and lands exactly on the first month and 17th day. This is the day that Jesus rises. This is also the day that the ark rested on Mount Ararat. Thanks to Dr. Barry, we know that means reverse the curse. Let's go for the third date. And the waters decreased continually. Now remember, he's sitting on top of Mount Ararat. It is the seventh month and 17th day of his time. He, and, and our time would be the first month and 17th day, the day that Jesus rose, reversed the curse. Jesus reversed the curse on the first month and 17th day. The ark rested on the seventh month and 17th day. God said, turn time back in Exodus 12. It is the same date. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. Now, he's sitting up there. Think about this. Seventh month and 17th day. And he's sitting up there till the 10th month and the first day of the month. Were the tops of the, the, the month translates Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh means new month. He sat up there until the 10th month in the first day. This is, and I can't find another, and there might be, maybe you could find it for me, where we have three separate dates within this, within three passages. Three passages, reports, three different dates, linear to each other. What date is the 10th month and the first day? That is, um, that is Tammuz 1. Tammuz 1 for, I believe that's us, and for, that would be the, uh, the 10th month and first day for, for uh, how do you say, Noah, but for us it would be the 4th month and first day. The 4th month and first day for us is June 16th, two days from now. So, come down here to my trusty um, time calendar at the bottom here. You can transfer over. You could, I don't know if you can take a picture of this, or it'll be in my room on Discord. You can go in there and take a look at it, and you'll see that Nissan is the first month, but not 
Not for uh, Noah. For Noah, that was the seventh month. And that's how we cross everything over. Nisan will have 30 days. And go to the right of that, you'll see Tishri, which is the seventh month for uh, for us and for Noah. It's the first month. It will have 30 days. You see how you have 30, 30, 31. 30, 30, 31. And it mirrors it perfectly on the other side. Tishri, Heshmon, 30, 30, 31. Now you take, it says, oh, in the second month of 17 day, Heshmon, 17 is when the flood began. Well, you count all of these 30s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them. What's 7 times 3? That's uh, 210. And then you have the two days, one for Sivan, one for Elul. So that's 212. And then you have Heshvan 17 days because flood began in Heshvan 17. So 212 and 17 is what? Is that 229? We come down here to where the flood began. And we see it's 229 days from the new head of the year, which God put in place. If you count back 229 days, you will land perfectly back here on Nissan 1. Now, I've matched up all of these dates to a Gregorian date. It is not necessarily, I believe that March 17th is always the head of the year. It never changes, but... At least I know it's Nissan 1. And at least I know from Nissan 1, you go forward 229 days because of this count. If you don't use this count, when you go to the flood, where it starts over here, flood begins, right there, flood begins, arc door shut, Adam sins. This is the same date Adam sinned. If you don't start from Heshvan 17, which I believe is October 31st, and count exactly 150 days from October 31st on our Gregorian calendar, 150 days will land perfectly on the cross, exactly to the day, Nisan 14. Three days later, the seventh month and 17th day, which we know as the first month and 17th day, is the day the ark rested, 153 days after the flood, exactly. If you go forward 57 days from the day Jesus rose to the day Jesus ascended, exactly 57 days, and then you count from that date of Sivan 15, 153 days again, you will land back on Halloween or back on Heshvan 17. Actually, when you count the Pentecost, I don't, I still, and I've, I've gotten emails and I appreciate the help with this, uh, I still cannot narrow down the date Jesus ascended. Um, they say that it is Shavuot, uh, but when I do it, I have this three days right here I cannot account for. And it's in there. I know it's in there. It's in the wording. I just don't know exactly where. I do know for a fact that Jesus ro rose on a Sunday. I know this is the week of unleavened bread. I know Jesus was the wave offering, the wave sheaf offering. I know he went to heaven because he returns on the self same day to Thomas in the upper room. But then there's this little passage that talks about the Feast of No Bread. There's no such thing as the Feast of No Bread and the Feast of Unleavened Bread at the same time. It would have been after that. It would have mirrored it. It would have been another seven days. And then from there, when I count 40 days, I land uh, as Jesus' Ascension Day on Sivan 12, which is wrong because it's Sivan 15. So I don't know how to account for those three days unless there's another uh, discussion of something he did. And, and, and we always assume, honestly, we always assume that when we begin our 40-day count that it's linear or that at the end of the 40-day count is when he rose. I can't find that exact wording. I'm guessing that I'm pretty close here to um, the date Jesus, where it says Jesus, it doesn't say he walked with them, somebody called me out on that. It says that he was seen of men for 40 days. He was seen of the people for 40 days. But then he does rise on Sivan 15, but I, I fall three days short. And, and I believe there must have been three days after he walked with them for 40 days that something took place. I know back here he shows up on shore 
uh, with hot coals, fried fish, and bread. So he cannot do that with them in the week of no bread. It has to happen after this week of no bread. So at some point, maybe that's when the event takes place during those three days where they cast their nets. And it would be fitting that it would happen, honestly, on a Thursday, that they spent the entire night out on a Thursday. And then on Friday, early in the morning, Jesus finds them uh, out on the water and says, cast your net on the other side. And then they catch all these fish. They bring it to shore. They would have to have this meal with Jesus with the hot coals and fish and bread previous to the uh, Sabbath beginning at nightfall because their walking distance couldn't be more than a Sabbath day walk, which is 2,000 cubits. And so, and plus the work of carrying those fish, they can't work on the Sabbath. So all of this would have had to have transpired previous to the Sabbath beginning. Remember, they're still calling Saturday the Sabbath and not uh, noticing that Jesus went to the cross on a Wednesday and rose on a Sunday morning. Wednesday being the day, I showed you this on the calendar before. Calendar's wrong. The Gregorian calendar's wrong in 2023. So I take you back here to March, March 16th. Now, since the creation of time until the end of the millennium will always be the day where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. Always. It will always be. Um, when you say that's March, when you say what day is it that there's 12 hours in the day, 12 hours at night? It is always March 16th. The next day, there's a few more minutes on one side and less on the other, a few more minutes of daylight. And that day is always the same. You can continue that concept through the entire uh, calendar and never be wrong. So if I came to you and says, what? we're going to go on the day where there are 14 hours and 12 minutes in the day. If I said that to you, you could go into date and time. And you can mess up whatever year you want, but the day of 14 hours and 12 minutes will never change. It will always be June 16th. Always. It will always be June 16th. So, March 16th is a Wednesday. It is also a Sabbath. It's the day that Jesus went to the cross. It is a Sabbath because it's recognized by God as the day Jesus went to the cross. Okay? Okay. I'm sorry, March 16th is the day of equal parts. Jesus went to the cross on the Sabbath on March the 30th. Okay, the first day of the year is March the 17th. You count 14 days and he went to the cross on March the 30th. It was a Wednesday. I'm in 2022 because the Gregorian calendar actually lines up. It won't line back up correctly until the year 2033. And I don't think that has any meaning that it's 2033 either, by the way. So, um... March the 30th, Jesus goes to the cross. It is a Wednesday. It is the day of equal parts, two weeks after the day of equal parts. It is the Sabbath. So we know that in 2022, the Sabbaths are set up. In 2022, the Sabbaths were always on the 16th. Let's go forward here to um, 2023 and look at March the 16th. This year, the Sabbaths will always be on a Thursday because the 16th is a Thursday because they do not uh, uh, they do not look at the day out of time at all. They do not count one day as 48 hours, which they should. If they did, there would be 364 days in a year, not 365 uh, if they followed God's timeline. So um, this year, whenever you're looking at a date, uh, in 2023, know that it's actually Wednesday, it's not Thursday, but know that Thursday will always be the Sabbath. So down here, March 30th, on a Thursday, we would show Jesus going to the cross. We, he would have not risen on a Sunday. On this Gregorian calendar this year, it would have been a Monday on April the 3rd. He always rises on April 3rd. There is an exact moment in time that April the 3rd has. And I'll show that to you here. Hold on a second. So. Worked out the Pentecost, though. I, I know I have the Pentecost correct because we have the un Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of No Bread, and then we count 50 days. And we land here on Sivan 21 on June 5th. But then that third date I showed you is Tammuz 1, the fourth month and first day, or the 10th month and the first day, which is June the 16th. This is the date the tops of the mountains are seen. 
are we going to be seeing the tops of the mountain? Why are there three individual dates pointing to Jesus, two of them pointing to Jesus on the cross, Jesus resurrecting, and then all of a sudden we get this oddball date out of nowhere, tops of the mountain scene. What's the point? He's not getting out of the ark yet. He doesn't get out of the ark. I mean, he, the, the, he, he, the ark lands all the way back here on the day Jesus rises. He is in this ark all this time until Tammuz 1. And then he stays in there and he does. What's next? We've already passed the Pentecost on Savan 21. What's the next Pentecost? Well, it's 50 days away and it lands perfectly on Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av will be July 24th this year, the 9th of Av. This is the date that the temple had been removed from the Jews and they were destroyed two individual times um, in history. Wouldn't it be fitting that also we, being the temple now, would be removed on the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av. It's a sad day for them because they lost two separate temples. And also there's a story of, that I've heard uh, tied it to this, and I'd have to research the date, but uh, 15, all the males, all the, I think it's all the males, went into the graves. And uh, in the morning, uh, a lot of them would rise up out of the graves still being alive, but uh, 15,000 wouldn't, so they would just bury them because they just stayed in the grave. And it's a sad day for them. But then there's a happy day because that all ended, and this is, to be off. This is the date that the dove returns. This is the, back here is the date that the raven and the dove were released from the ark, and then the raven came back. I'm sorry, the dove came back with no rest for his foot, and then here, the dove is released again a week later on to be off, and it's a happy day because it returns with an olive branch. This is a very happiest day. This is a day um, that nobody died and they celebrated that they, nobody was going to die anymore, that the curse had been lifted. And then up here, the dove doesn't return after being released on Av 22. Now, Pentecost lands on Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. We go another 50 days. Every Pentecost, remember, lands on a Sunday, always on a Sunday. I know this year... Um, July 24th is not a Sunday. Am I right? Let me look at that again. July 24th should not be a Sunday. No, it's a Monday, It's but it is actually Sunday because the 2023 calendar is off. In 2022, July 24th would have landed on a Sunday, just to make sure I got that right. So the next Pentecost will be September the 11th. This is the day the towers came down. This is also the first day of creation. God began creating everything on September the 11th, and he created time uh, on September the 14th. September the 14th is the last Sabbath. We go forward from that Pentecost, and we go forward 50 days. And where does it land us? Yes, it lands us right here, a Pentecost. And Pentecost lands us one day before the flood on October the 30th. It lands us right there on October the 30th, one day before the flood begins. So, I don't think we're supposed to count a fourth Pentecost, but I, a Pentecost, but I thought it was really cool how this Pentecost lands exactly one day before the flood. We have this first Pentecost. Happy, a happy Pentecost. Then we have a very sad Pentecost to be of. Then we have a very happy Pentecost, the beginning of the creation of the world. Also turned sad because of September 11th, the towers coming down, but and then we have the next Pentecost. It's very sad because the flood is about to begin and the entire world will be judged. So we have a very high watch date beginning in two days. On right here, the tops of the mountains being seen on June the 16th. And then uh, the next Pentecost being counted from this pen the first Pentecost here on, uh, on uh, what is that, Sivan 21. Uh, Tisha B'Av, July 24th, that Pentecost uh, is another very high watch date for me, July 24th, which is the 9th of Av. So, let's keep on going here. I just wanted to show you this again. You can find this in the Book of Jubilees. Uh, they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, which confirms 
the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Enoch, uh, these scrolls are old, old, and they found them amazingly at a time like this for us. And it clearly teaches in here. Um, you can see there in the in the uh, capitalized section, make, uh, for, for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. And it does. The moon goes around the earth. We are a reflection of Christ. We are not Christ. The moon is not perfect right now, and neither are we. It does not make its orbit perfectly like it used to. It used to. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, um, the moon went around perfectly 30 days each month, and the earth went around the sun perfectly 360 days a year. It does not do that anymore. It is off and uh, of course it would be because again we are a reflection of the of the uh of jesus and we are nowhere near perfect we are only made perfect by him the moon only has light because of the sun the reflection of the sun and still the moon is not orbiting properly but it will it'll go back so make observations of the moon how it disturbs seasons and comes in from year to year 10 days too soon for this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable uh, an abominable day, the day of testimony and an unclean day, a feast day. They're doing that right now. They do not have um, the correct dates set up. They keep trying to move things around, but they can't justify what they did with those days. Those days just simply disappear. Well, I want this day to land on a Sunday, so we'll just make four days disappear to make that happen. That's not how the world works. There's an exact time on each day that cannot be ignored. <clears throat> Down here at the bottom, they will make the year 364 days only. 364 days, that's it. That's all there are in a year. I've showed you this before. In 2023, on March the 16th, there are, if you go to March the 17th, you've gone past the 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night. At some point on March the 16th, there is exactly 12 hours in a day and 12 hours at night. This happens every year, never changes. It is always going to be just under the 12, but not past. Once you go past, you've already gone over. So March the 16th is the day of equal parts. In 2023, June 16th, I just noticed that it's the same, it's the 16th, huh? March, April, May. Three months. Huh. I just noticed it's exactly the same date. Um, three months later, uh, June the 16th will have 14 hours and 12 minutes in its day in a few seconds. And the seconds will always vary, but it will never be hours off like it is with the equinox. We walk in the light. We walk in the day. Equal lux actually means day of equal parts. Equinox means night of equal parts, but we are of the day. We don't stumble. We are not of the night, uh, lest they stumble. So 14 hours and 12 minutes, right? It's pretty close to 14 hours and 13 minutes there, but it's just under 14 hours and 12 minutes on June the 16th. What happens 600 years from now? Oh, June 16th will always be known as the day that has 12 hours, I'm sorry, 14 hours and 12 minutes in it, always. In the year 2600, June 16th, will have 14 hours and 12 minutes in it. This year, on June the 16th, it will have 14 hours and 12 minutes in it. You can identify a day by how many minutes there are. You cannot skip days, move them around. You can't say this day is something one time and it's something else another time because the moon does it. You can't do that. This is the day. This is always the day, June 16th. Is this the, the day of the rapture? I don't know, but I'm telling you that this is the day of 14 hours and 12 minutes. It will be that for always, forever. Okay. Now, I wanted to point this out. This is, was pretty cool. I found this on Pack. Uh, Cindy E. posted it. And she said she was passing along. I want you to remember something as you're watching and trying to figure this out and you're getting uh, annoyed or um, impatient. I want you to remember something. There are 8 billion people on this planet that are not watching. They are not looking. They don't care. You can tell them to their face that this event's about to happen and they will laugh at you. They won't believe you. They'll call you a crazy person because they've never heard of this stuff and they don't want to hear of this stuff. And no matter how much you beg them to listen to you, you come off as crazy, not them. 
Be grateful. And this, this comes straight from the heart. Be grateful that God has allowed you to see what is unfolding. Others that are asleep are not so lucky. So when you get impatient and it bothers you and you get angry because this day passed and that day passed, you shouldn't be angry. You should be so grateful that you're here and you're watching this stuff and and you are disappointed. Do you think there's 8 billion people on the face of this earth that are disappointed when a date passes? No. Why? Because they're not watching. You should be grateful that you're disappointed that that day passed, not angry or upset that the day passed. If you're watching, it is a wonderful thing. Others that are asleep are not so lucky. Ask yourself, why you? Why now? Why did you wake up? And I'm telling you, I can sit here and tell you that most of you have been watching for a very long time, and that's not a prideful thing at all because it's been quite a, a road that I've been down. But I have never seen anything like I'm seeing right now. We didn't have these these outlets to talk on like we have now. As a matter of fact, I didn't even start this channel until a couple years ago. And you'll know why I started it because I started seeing videos popping up when I first started watching, there weren't very many videos. Dr. Barry was one of the first I started watching. He was amazing. Um, but I haven't seen anything like I'm seeing right now in all my years, 35 years of making timelines and trying to figure this out. And I'm very content with this timeline that I have now. I don't think it's wrong. Um, but I could be. And I'm not saying that, it, that you know, thus saith the Lord by any means. But I'm telling you, after 35 years of doing this stuff, you guys are coming out of the woodwork and you're coming with information that I've never heard of. And I've been, you know, I'm, I'm not like uh, somebody who studies day and night and sits in a, you know, in a, in a monastery somewhere. No, but I have been trying to figure this out for a very long time. And it's amazing to me, some of you young people who are coming into this, who've been, oh, I've been, uh, I've been watching for the last two years and I found this and I'm like, oh my goodness, how did you find this? How did you find such a thing? Where did you just come from? And the things that they're finding, I don't fault anyone, no one that is watching. I don't fault anyone's timeline or calendar. I don't tell them that they're wrong. I just tell them what I think it is. And I never say, no, nope, you're wrong. You, you, how could you cut a, I, I never do such a thing. Why would I do such a thing? Because they are watching. They're with us and they're watching. Who's right? Who's wrong? It doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. This is about ask yourself, why you? Why now? I think about this daily and it shoots my faith and confidence sky high, as it should. You've been chosen. That's why you're watching. You're not watching because you decided to do it two years ago, three years ago. Something triggered inside of you. A lot of you this happened. Most of you this happened. And everybody I speak to, and uh, I, I, Brother Chooch from TOLN Times has put on things. How long have you been watching? I, I want to say 96% or I don't remember what his survey came up to. 86% it was really huge oh, in the last two to three years. <laughs> two to three years? How did you guys find this stuff out? In two to, I've been working on this for 35. But again, it's not a prideful thing or a jealousy thing. I am an, an impressed thing. I can't even believe how much you guys know in such a short period of time. And the information you guys send me is absolutely astounding what you find. And so I appreciate that. I just wanted to show you this is a Hebrew uh, attempt to line up their calendar with ours. And I want you to notice right here, right in the center of March is the beginning of Nisan 1. Right in the center of March is March the 16th, March the 17th, the head of the year. It's right there. This You can find this anywhere online. The uh, head of the month is always called Rosh Chodesh. That means head of the month. does not mean new moon. It means head of the month. Rosh Hashanah means new year. It always means a brand new year. The Rosh Hashanah was moved from September the 15th to March the 17th by God in Exodus 12. All right. Yeah, these guys right here. Oh, I'm going to show you something. This is going to blow your socks off. So I tried to get on here. Uh, I was on here, but nobody could hear me because I had the wrong headset on. So I uh, posed this thought to them and check this out. This will this will blow your mind. First Thessalonians 4. I'm going to go up here and start in 15. 
no, 16. I'm going to start in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. 4, and, and we all know this. We all know it so well. But this was just shown to me. Uh, just before, actually, before one day before I got on here with them, I saw them online. I'm like, hey, i got to jump on and tell them about this. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. There's that 16 again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. What does caught up mean? We've translated this exhaustively. The word rapture is not in the Bible. That is the word rapture. That is our translation into English. The actual word that belongs there is harpazo. The Latins uh, did a better translation when they called it the rapturo. And then we translated it from the Latins to rapture. That is, what is a rapture? What is a harpazo? It is snatching away of imminent danger. Remember that big group I showed you? We're taken out of that group. It's not that they are... Um, they, they are Elisha. They are going to tear off the world. They're going to realize, and they're going to be taken as well. All right, so they're caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will always be with Jesus after that, always be with God. Caught up, we'll be harpazoed. But look at this. We read this, and I think that we all misunderstood this. And I'll show you why. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Who will be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter? Who is going to try to convince you that um, something didn't take place? What would shake your mind? Who is he talking to here? Who is he worried about right here? He is worried about the tribulation saint. He is not talking to the bride here. The bride is gone. Back here in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, the bride's gone. Here, 2 Thessalonians 2.1, that ye not be soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And they've argued over this. You see, that just means very clearly that um, there's going to be this apostasia, there's going to be this falling away, and then the man of uh, sin will be revealed. And we try to cut that verse in half saying, well, okay. Uh, well, the bride will be gone. This apostasy is us, and it'll be our rapture. And then the man... No, that's not what this verse is saying. This verse is saying, we missed this part up here that I've highlighted. Gathering. This is not a rapture. The rapture is for the bride. The rapture is being taken out of imminent danger. The rapture is before the first seal is opened. This is a gathering. This is the great multitude. These are the Elishas. These are those who counted on their works. These are those, just like Elisha, when Elijah was taken, who rent their clothes. They tore off their clothes. They dropped to their knees instantly. How long do you think it will take a true Christian to realize he just missed the rapture? I'll tell you how long. Every single person you warned, every single time you uh, like a video that, that we're putting out and, and, and subscribe to a video, these videos will make it through. There, there's going to be, a, I think the rapture is going to cause a, uh, an EMP like no other, but the power is going to start coming back on and all this information is still going to be there. I don't think the, the Antichrist is that smart, honestly, to get rid of all of this. I think some of this is still going to make it through and they need to know what happened? Why? That ye be not sh uh, soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by way. They're scared to death. They're seeing something. They're scared to death. And when are they going to go? Again, I really believe that this gathering is going to happen when that ark door stays open for seven days. They had every opportunity to come into that ark. I'm telling you that he sat at that ark door with the ark door open, and they had every opportunity. He warned them for 120 years, and they laughed at him, just like they do us today. They laughed at him. For 120 years, they laughed. And then on the 30th, the last Pentecost that I showed you, the day before the flood, 
all these baby animals are going inside and they stayed babies for, for that year and 10 days. They stayed babies. They didn't grow. Uh, they were easy to manage as, as little babies and they weren't killing each other. And it wasn't like um, crazy town inside of that ark for a year and 10 days. No, God kept them young and then released them and they grew out in the wild. Um, but here it clearly says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word. These people are going through something. And I think it's going to last seven days. I think the six seals are open in six days. And on the sixth seal, uh, when John's up there going, oh, who are these people? And John's like, I don't know. I'm not from, <laughs> I'm not from heaven. You are. And he's like, oh, these are those that came out of great tribulation. The tribulation begins the second the first seal is opened. There is no tribulation yet. It will not begin until that seal is open. I know many are trying to get those seals open to show that we're getting to seal six, but we are not getting to seal six. We haven't seen seal one yet. When that we go, the first seal will be cracked, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal, and on seal six, these people will appear in heaven. Again, I think it's six days, and the reason I think that is because that ark door stayed open. Just as in the days of Noah, so many references to the days of Noah on this timeline and it all backs to Jesus on the cross and comes back to uh, the day you saw the tops of the mountains. And it comes back to the day of the flood. And seven days prior to that, that ark door stayed open and they had every opportunity. But they wouldn't. Their pride would not allow them. But this time it's different. This time it's different. We have Jesus this time. They didn't have um, what we have. They didn't. The, the uh, Nephilim of those days didn't have uh, grace. We have grace. We have Jesus. Jesus is grace. So when we reread this, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. The bride is gone, and that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin is going to be revealed before the saints go home. The man of sin will be revealed before the saints go home. This is not a rapture verse. This is a gathering in the sixth seal verse right here. And that's what I wanted to show you. I thought that was mind-blowing. I wanted to show you something. Uh, this is the circuit of the sun. Everybody knows it. This is the, if you stand outside and take a picture every single uh, week uh, for 52 weeks a year, this is, you, you're, the sun will move in a figure eight. Figure eight being uh, eternity. This is God signature right here. This is, um, who is it that talks about Fibonacci all the time? Uh, it, uh, let's see. I think that's uh, I'll, I have uh, their picture here. I believe that's Isaiah 53 that says that that's the golden sequence and his fingerprint. I think I'll, I have it in here. But I want you to notice something right here. You see that over there on the left? I don't know if you can see that. If it's too blurry. It says 24 degrees, and the next one below it says 22 degrees. So the line in between is 23 <clears throat> 23 degrees, and the dotted line is the very Maximum height, the sun reaches into those degrees. So 23.5 degrees is a very maximum height the sun reaches for us in summer. This occurs, it goes into the 23.5 degree mark for 15 days, 7 and 7, 15 inclusive. And it begins on June the 15th. And it ends on June the 30th, 15 days, 7 and 7. Down here is the day of equal parts. The day of equal parts. It's the four star of Algenib skirts along the horizon on this day. And that is March the 16th. On the opposite side, it is also the day of equal parts. That is September the 26th, the day of equal parts. It is not the same day the four star of Algenib skirts along the horizon in the other direction. That actually happens on September the 15th. Down here at the bottom, the same thing happens. It comes into the 23.5 degree mark on December the 15th, and it exits on December the 30th, right there. For, uh, 15 days inclusive, seven and seven on either side. So what does this mean? 23.5 degrees, 23.5 degrees. For a total of 47 degrees. And I noticed something. It didn't match us, because we're 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mom, 23 from the dad. But guess what? That extra half a degree on either side, Begins with God, it ends with God. Half a degree on either side, 
makes it 47. So mom, dad, and God on both sides of us. When they found, when Ron Wyatt found the blood of Jesus on the ark underneath the, uh, where Jesus was crucified and it had run down the crack, uh, he took a cotton swab and swabbed it and took it to a lab to test and they said, this blood is still alive. You can go ro watch his video, Ron Wyatt. It's really cool. Uh, he learned something there. Um, but when he tested the blood, it had 24 chromosomes, 23 from the mom and one from heaven, from his father, 24 chromosomes. That's the exact amount of 23.5 degrees on the north end and 23.5 degrees on the south end, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn that you see. And that's why. And I, and I was curious, why does it come up to 47? Why not 46? Well, I left Jesus out. He's on either side of us. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. He completes us in this time period and what time period is am i looking at june 16th when does this begin well it begins tomorrow on june 15th the longest day of the year is june 21st right smack in the middle of that and then seven days after that the sun leaves the tropic of cancer 23.5 degrees so we are technically in jesus right now as of tomorrow on the 15th and out of uh his I don't know, I don't want to say out of Jesus, but you know what I'm saying, that part that we're with Jesus right there. I thought that was pretty cool. This is where everything will be on June 16th. The moon will, uh, sorry, the moon will be in darkness for three days. Mercury, and this is the very beginning of the three days of darkness. The moon will pass the sun and come back out on, uh, I think, uh, 619. Uh, Mercury, the messenger, is right next to the moon. And remember, the moon is reflection. But Jesus will uh, produce all the light. So I thought that was pretty cool that that landed there. Let's see here. Oh, I wanted to point. Uh, I wanted to prove my point about the gathering. You can read this verse in Luke 21. You see the references just above in blue, Mark 13:24, and Matthew 24:26. We've all read these verses. This verse here is directed to the bride. You will not see the word gathering in here over here but in those days after that tribulation this is in mark this is for the sleepy church these are those who will like Elisha, throw off the world the sun shall be darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall this is happening after we leave right here this is uh it's it, it's business as usual things are going on there's things we're seeing there's signs in the sun and the moon and the stars it doesn't talk about um, anything crazy going on until we are taken then they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds and these things begin to come to pass and look up and lift up your heads for the redemption draws draws near so that's to, directed to us then now I want to point this out that I noticed with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring we are the sea and we are roaring we are telling you that this is coming we are roaring the sea and the waves are roaring we're warning you that this moment is about to take place exactly when we don't know but everybody can see it there's no more question I don't think by now uh, that is this event is about to take place but in those days after the tribulation the sun shall be dark and this happens after we leave now the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light the stars of heaven shall fall remember as we go up uh, satan is cast out so they're going to see this event immediately upon us leaving and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory they're going to see this rapture event they will see it. Remember, just like Alicia, if you see me go, if you see me go, you will receive a double portion. They will see us go. Who's going to see us go? Every single person that you told that this event is going to take place, and no matter what they say to you or how embarrassed you are to tell them, you tell them anyway because – they you 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 don't take that coin you've heard this piece of information don't take that coin and bury it you take it and you share it and you multiply it and you bring more into the kingdom how do you do that 
Do you make the guy or the woman kneel down in front of you and accept the Lord? No. You tell him what's about to happen. So when they see you go, they'll know what happened. There will be no doubt in their mind. There will be no television lie that will make them believe for one second that an alien took you or a nuclear blast just disappeared your body right next to your wife who didn't i'm not saying my wife's not going but i'm just saying like in a house you know one will be taken one will stay and what will be the answer what will they know they're my wife if let's and again i think my wife's going with me i'm not saying that but if someone in my house doesn't go they are very aware keenly aware of what happened and they will not believe this lie and that's what you're supposed to do Get this information out to as many people as you can. Share this information. Sh uh, uh, subscribe to these videos that they might make it through. Um, take that coin that God gave you and don't bury it and go tell somebody. Don't make them kneel down in front of you and accept it. I'm not telling you to do that, although that would be nice. At least tell them what's about to happen and so that they will be not left unawares and that when their time comes, and let me keep reading, and I'll show you when their time is. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather. You see that word gather? That is not harpazo. That is not a rapture verse. That is a gather together. His Who are the elect? We are selected out of the elect. These people are every bit as important. This is a great multitude like Revelation talks of that cannot be numbered. They are taken in seal six. It is a huge number. And they will be brought from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth and unto the uttermost parts of heaven. They will be carried away to paradise um, and gathered. They will be gathered. They, Of course, they are going to heaven, yes. But they are not being raptured out of imminent danger. Right here it says they will be gathered. That is not rapture. At the end, we can come down here. And he shall send, I'm down here in 31, uh, Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This is a verse speaking to the tribes you see up here. Then shall, the, uh, shall appear to the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. They're all going to see this rapture event. And then guess who's going to see this gathering event? right back here, this gathering event that happened. The Jews are going to see it. They're going to see it. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Who are the tribes? Remember the 12 tribes of Israel. They are the ones that are going to mourn. This verse in Matthew is speaking to the Jew. Because they will see all of this happen two separate times and then they're going to look up to heaven and they're going to cry and they're going to realize the one that they pierced and they're too going to believe which is why i'm not sure how long this tribulation event's going to last but it is going to last only long enough to save as many people as who will believe and not believe in the lie and not take the mark that is how long it will last if it's seven years, if it's five months, if it's six days, I don't know how long it is. And I'm not even going to venture a guess, except for I believe the saints are taken pretty quickly after the, the bride is taken. But the Jew, I don't know how long they're going to have to stay here for. But how long will it take them once they see these two events take place? And then they have all these angels flying around saying, don't receive the mark. There's all these warnings going on. I mean, how do you ignore that? How would you ignore that? Okay, here comes my shout out. Please go subscribe to these channels. Um, this, I don't know where he's from, but he makes half his videos in a foreign language, which I don't recognize. I don't know if it's, I don't, I'm not even going to say it because I get into trouble every time. I have no idea <laughs> what language it is, but he is looking at June 15th tomorrow, which he is calling True Ascension Day. And he makes a very good argument for why he believes tomorrow is Ascension Day. He cometh with clouds. That's his uh, YouTube channel. He literally has, let's see, 2,000 subscribers. It would be nice to get his subscribers up to a million so that his information will make it through um, this rapture event and warn the people on the other side because that's basically what I'm doing. I'm not warning the bride. I think you've already been chosen and you're already set. There's a reason why you're watching. I think that uh, a lot of people are, are hearing us talk and they're going to realize 
when we're taken, they're going to see it and they're going to know exactly what happened. And they, too, are going to drop to their knees and accept the Lord and tear off this world. Isaiah 53, if for nothing else, please go subscribe to him to get his number away from that amount of subscribers. We need him to get up to uh, a million subscribers as well. He has a, wonder, a bunch of wonderful videos, and I love the way he uh, – he, uh, if you don't like the truth, uh, put it right in your face and uh, him yelling at you, uh, don't subscribe. But if you want to be told the truth and you want to hear from somebody who is passionate about the truth, go subscribe to Isaiah 53. He's, uh, he does a really good job. Info Direct Group. I found this guy. He's only got 4,000 subscribers. I like, uh, of course, our timelines aren't the same, but that's irrelevant. It's the uh, the watching that I showed you, there is a reason why all of this is happening. It is not to figure out the date. It is proof of who we are, why we're doing this. Some of you are seeing license plates. That's good enough. Some of you are uh, seeing things in the clouds, and some of you are dreaming dreams, and others are having visions, and some of you see numbers every way, everywhere, and some of you are working out the golden – maybe he's the one with the golden sequence – I don't know, the several of them are, uh, use the, no, he does. This is the one info direct group uses the golden sequence, the Fibonacci rule. So, um, again, I'm never going to say I'm right and somebody else is wrong and they're crazy, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not the point. It's the point of that we're watching. That's what's happening. Um, so please go, uh, subscribe to info direct group, uh, get his numbers up so that it might make it through. Um, the basic information is that, uh, the rapture did occur. That's where we went, and it doesn't matter what date any of us come up with. The fact of the matter is they're going to know exactly what date it happened, and then they're going to hear all of us speak to how long after that. And they're going to go, well, it could be six days like Repo Man says. It could be five months uh, like we see in the Bible, five months. It could be three and a half years like many people believe. It could be, you know, I don't know. It could be, it has to be before the, the two witnesses. There's all these different scenarios. It could be 40 days. We, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, uh, but they will. They'll become the greatest group of watchers this world has ever seen, and they'll have uh, the advantage of the uh, beginning of the timeline where we don't. Uh, we have to go back 4,000, 6,000 years ago for our timeline to be understood. Uh, they'll just have to go back the day it happened, which, you know, whatever day that was for them, they'll start watching immediately. They're going to drop to their knees immediately. Mark Allison, I love his program. He's a really cool guy. I like going on to his live. He does lives all the time, plays music. Uh, people get into his uh, chat room, and we all just chat back and forth and talk, and it's just a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, YouTube that he has going on there. Uh, what did I do here? Oh, I, I noticed something. I noticed something. Um, from April the 3rd, the day Jesus rose. Again, this says Monday, but it's actually a Sunday. This this is the calendar for 2023. I should have put that as 2022. It gets, gets confusing for everybody. But April the 3rd is actually Sunday. Jesus rose on a Sunday on April the 3rd. 75 days later. And I have always tried to tie... I, I've tried to figure out when um, Abraham got Canaan. When he walked into the Canaan, he was 75 years old. And it, and I said, well, you know, is it the day that the Israel became a nation on May 14th? No, because that doesn't match 75. Is it the 75th day? Well, no, because that really doesn't match anything else. But guess what happens on June 16th? The tops of the mountains are seen. And Abraham sees, walks into the land of Canaan. And that's exactly 75 days after Jesus. Everything starts with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Could this be the day on June 16th when Abraham walks into Canaan? I thought that was pretty cool that it worked out. I didn't even notice that until I was sitting there looking at it. I'm like, that's odd. That's like right around 70 days. And I had, I put it into time and date, and here it come up, and I like, fell out of my chair. I couldn't believe it. Mount Ararat is where the ark rested. It rested on the seventh month and 17th day, 153 days after the flood began on Heshvan 17. In the, in the seventh month and 17th day, it rested on this mountain. This mountain is almost 17,000 feet high. He sat in that ark from the seventh month and 17th day until the 10th month and the first day, which we are about to see. Um, here on June 16th.
where did this where is this mountain at this mountain's high is the highest peak in turkey this is the highest peak in turkey where did we see this incredible earthquake 7.8 and what's it pointing to this is why i think 2023 is the year because so many events take place now will be wiped clean if we go past them into the next 2024 it'll be too late why have these events happen now that all line up with certain dates that cannot carry off into the next year again my timeline is 6000 years worth of information all put down into a one year timeline no all the events are not on here i couldn't possibly fit them all but they, i've highlighted many very important dates that cross section themselves into other dates cross-reference themselves into other dates and it, it works out perfectly so on february 6th in 2023 in turkey where mount ararat is this huge 7.8 earthquake occurred and i think that's it right there so i wanted to go through that with you and show all that to you give you encouragement please um <laughs> Well, I couldn't make a bride uh, turn away from this for anything in the world. Couldn't make me turn away from this. And again, 35 years, I haven't seen what I'm seeing lately. And uh, I haven't personally, even even me, just me, uh, getting this information and learning what I've learned in the last three years is mind-blowing. I could not see any of this stuff. And I'm literally sitting there on my couch um, studying and working this out and I noticed that verse that has three different dates in it this is almost three years ago and I and I and I that's when I say I need to know the head of the year or I'm never going to know when all this stuff happened and just piece by piece puzzle piece by puzzle piece I do the math according to what I find and I say I don't know if that's right or wrong but then when I do the math and lands on Halloween I'm like well that's kind of that's kind of odd and then I keep doing the math and it lands on the cross on Nissan 14. I'm just like, all right, now hold on a second. I keep doing the math and it lands on Jesus' resurrection. I just, uh, it, it's amazing what's been shown to all of us, to every single one of us. So I encourage you to keep watching and I encourage you, please go warn somebody. Go tell somebody. Don't take that coin. Let me get a coin. I think, I think it's a quarter. Yeah. Don't take that coin and bury it. Go take that coin and share it and multiply it and warn people so that when the event does take place, again, I think the bride's chosen. I think it's done. I think it's over with. Um, I think that uh, the next step is going to be for the saints. And I think that seal six is going to open up pretty quick. And uh, when the event takes place, just like Elisha, when you see me go, if you see me go, I will cast back my cloak, which represents the, the Holy Spirit, and you will receive a double portion. When they see us go, if you haven't warned people about what's about to happen, and we go, and they stand there going, well, it must have been aliens or that nuclear blast, you know, 2,000 miles away that evaporated the person that was standing next to me, but not me, Um you know, maybe maybe the sonic boom made their waves in their body just, you know, disappear or something. I, their clothes are still here. So, you know, I don't know what lie will be told. It's going to be, they're setting it up now. There's an eight-foot alien in my backyard. They're setting it up right now. And the kid had no reason to lie. So, anyway, Repo Man 64, I could go on forever. Please go warn somebody so that they know when this event takes place, which is just around the corner, so that they know that when they see you go, that they know where you went and not some crazy thing that happened. And it is a, a rapture event. And then that they will fall directly to their knees and accept the Lord and say, please, Lord, I need you. Save me, you know, and uh, they too will be saved. And that's all God wants. That's what the tribulation is for. It's not to beat anybody up and then throw them in hell for seven years. That's ridiculous. It is to change the hearts and the minds of the masses. And it will. It will. When that first little event of the bride happens, 
They're going to be like, oh, I know what just happened. That crazy guy at work told me this is going to happen. What are we going to do? And he's sitting there with his friends going, get the Bible quick. And they start opening the Bible and they start studying. You study this part. And there's 10 of them in a room. You take this page and this page. And they all start studying. And they say, okay, right here it says this. And they're going to they're going to rip that Bible to pieces trying to figure it out. And they'll create timelines like I've never seen. I'll be standing in heaven going, oh, you know, so. Anyway, we will chat with you again later. Go to a quiet place. Yeah, I got into trouble for saying this. <laughs> and I'm going to go explain it again. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. The second that you've done this very intimate, private thing, you don't go to your friends and say, Hey, guys, I'm going to go accept the Lord. Uh, then after that, we're going to go get sandwiches, and uh, then we'll stop by the store, and then we'll go see a movie. But let me take care of this real quick because this guy tells me to do that, and then I know I'm saved, and you guys, you know, I don't, I don't care what you do. That's not how it works. This is an intimate, private moment between you and your father that created you, and it says it right in Matthew 6, 5, and 6. Do this quietly in your chambers. And when you do, there will be this celebration that happens in heaven over what you just did. And you'll see the change. Then go warn somebody. Go warn somebody. Go tell everybody after that. Um, please go subscribe to those channels I told you about. Let's get this information through the rapture that is about to take place. <clears throat> will it take place on June the 16th? I don't know. Many are looking at July 4th. It's a really, I really don't have an event on July the 4th on this timeline, but that's not to say God will uh, perform, not perform one. He can do what he wants, right? Uh, but the very next high watch day after that for me will be July 24th, unless I find something, which is happening a lot lately. So um, we will chat with you again later. Um, we're almost there. We're, we're almost going home. <laughs>